In this episode of The Art of Boat Building, we're going to start making the spars for the Haven. I started with some quarter sawn Sitka spruce. So I've decided I'm going to start with the two smallest spars, and that is the jib club and the gaft. This is the jib club, and this is the gaff. The jib club needs to be 1 and 5 16 inch square, and the gaff needs to be 1 and 5 8 inch square. So I have them here. Now the jib club is 57 inches long, and the gaff is 9 foot and a half inch. Over here at the plans, we can see the jib club here. Like, as I had mentioned before, that the main thickness is 1 and 5 sixteenths in diameter. Now what it wants to do is to taper on each end. And on the fore end of it, it wants to taper down to 1 and 1 eighth inch in diameter. And on the aft end, it wants to taper down to 1 and 1 sixteenth inch diameter. So that's the next thing we'll do is to put that taper on all four sides. So the way I'm going to accomplish that is over here on the joiner. So I found the center of the um, jib club. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this so that I'm on the high spot here and then tip this up so that I can run that through and taper it off. And I'll do that on all four sides and then I'll slowly move back a little bit and do it again on all four sides and then so forth and so on until I end up with one and an eighth inch square. We'll check it here. That's exactly one and an eighth. So now I've got this end. I'll do the um, four or the aft end at one and one sixteenth. One and one sixteenth. Now that the jib club is done, we can do the same thing to the gaft. So if you remember, I've squared up the gaft at one and five eighths. And at the aft end, it is one and a quarter. And at the fore end, it is one and a half. So I discovered that the um, joiner worked really well for the jib club. But for the gaft, it's a little bit too long and it was taking off too small of bites. So what I decided to do was to use my power plane on it. So what I did first was I found the center line of the 1 and 5 eighths and then I moved over so that I have exactly 1 and a quarter with these two tick marks here. So what I'm going to do is to put a batten on here.
like so, and then mark that out. And I'll do it on the other side also. So now I'll flip this over and then use my power plane on it. Now that I've got the spars all tapered properly, it's now time to turn them round. And to do that, the first step is to turn the four-sided uh, spar into an eight-sided spar. So to illustrate this, I've taken a piece of offcut from the gaff, and I've drawn a circle and marked off the 45 degrees. And then I've drawn some lines down the length of it. So what we want to do is to remove this material here and use those lines as our reference. Now, with a piece being straight, it's very easy that we could lay this out on the end of a piece and draw those lines down very easily. However, we know that our spar tapers as it gets closer to the fore and aft end of it. So what we want to be able to do is to keep this proportion of these three sections the same. And fortunately, boat builders that have come before us have figured out that this ratio is 7 to 10 to 7. And because of that, we're able to make a spar maker's gauge. So I've put together a spar maker's gauge here, and I have made it smaller, So, but this is still the, per, the ratio of 7 to 10 to 7. So mine is 1 and 3 fourths to here, and from here to here, two and a half and one and three fourths. So it retains that same seven, 10, seven ratio. Now, the way this works is that when it's on the spar like this, these two pins will ride along it like that. So you can see that if the spar gets wider, it, those pencils move across and it retains the same proportion. Or if it goes the other way, it's still the same proportion. So the way this works is simply put it on here and then draw like so and we end up with that same 7, 10, 7. So now if I take the spar maker's gauge here and go along and I'll mark off down the side of it here. So I'm going to do that on all four sides on both ends and we'll be ready to start cutting. Well I've got all four sides completed now on both the gaft and the jib club. Uh, before I start mitering these 45s on there. Uh, there's one more thing that I need to do while I've still got it square. And that has to do with the gaff jaws. The drawing with the gaff jaw shows a small slot right here. And that slot is to hold this piece of bronze lever 
that the sheave will attach to. Now the reason that it needs to swivel down like this is that when that gaff is in its down position, it would be like this, and as it got hoisted up, it's gonna be up in this position. So then that pin or that lever needs to be facing up this way, in the way that he shows right here. If I scale that off from there, so from the end of the gaff, if I go over six inches, and then the length this way looks like it's about four inches. And it needs to go halfway through, or a little more than halfway through, uh, when you look on the end of it. So what I've got set up here is I measured out and found the center line here. And you can see I'm six inches over and four inches this way. And uh, I've set a 3 16 inch uh, um, brad tipped drill in here. And then I've set this, the depth gauge, so it won't go all the way through. Um, so what my plan is, is to start here and then slowly drill holes and then I'll work those holes together. Plans show this little taper to the gaff, so I'm going to cut those on there next. So I'm going to get started with the jib club. Uh, shaping it into an octagon. Uh, I've cut some little blocks of wood here that have a 90 degree uh, V cut in there in order to hold this down to my bench. So I'm just going to clamp that here and at this location. So the goal here is to take these two lines that I put on with the um, spar maker's gauge and we want to flatten that out. So I'm going to start with the draw knife to get the bulk of the material off. I have a little more control with the draw knife with the bevel side down. And then I'm going to finish off with a block plane. So I found that the uh, block plane really takes it down just as fast um, than just than using the draw knife. So it just takes a couple of strokes before you get going down.
So now that I've got it turned down to eight sides, we just want to rotate it so that this, there's the high point is at the top and we want to take just a little bit off there. So basically making it 16 sides. Once I've gotten those high spots off, that's a matter of just sort of going along and touching it up so that it has a round appearance to it. So now that I've got it basically round, I can still feel the facets on there. So what I want to do is sand it. So I'm going to take a piece of uh, foam block here. You've probably seen me using these for sanding blocks before. And I'm going to put it around here and sand this. Just get a little bit of a concave to it. And then put a piece of sandpaper on there. Now what I'm going to do is just go over this with this 80 grit sandpaper and um, go all the way around and get it, kind of look at it and turn it. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Uh, it's interesting that you can almost tell if it's round better with your hand than you can with your eyes. So I am pretty happy with what I've got there. So uh, now the next thing I need to do is that on the uh, um, <clears throat> fore end of the jib club, there needs to be a tendon so that the jib club socket can fit on there. Now that I've got that done, I'll give it a final sand and get started on the gaff. Well, I've got the gaff all eight sided now. So the next thing is to knock those high points off uh, like I did on the uh, jib club.
I began sanding the spar with some 80 grit sand cloth. I'm doing it cross grain so that it really will round that off. Now I'm aware there's a mechanical way of doing this, but that is actually illustrated in Greg Russell's book. But I felt because the spruce is fairly soft and a small spar that doing it by hand was a more uh, prudent way to do it. I then sanded with the grain using the concave sanding block that I had made. Once I got it all smoothed down with 80, I then moved up from to 120 and then eventually I finished off with 220. Well, the two spars are all shaped and sanded down to 220 grit, so they're uh, ready for some varnish. But there's one more thing we need to do to the gaff before we do that, and that is put some stops on there for the wire bridle. On the sail plan, we can see that this is the wire bridle right there. And what we need to do is put a stop here and here so that when the gaft is hoisted, that those don't slide out of place. So the sail plan is drawn at three quarters of an inch equals one foot. So if I find three quarters, one foot. So if I measure from this point out, it looks like it's one foot. It's like about one foot five. And the other one is, looks like it's almost exactly three feet. So if I go here on the bottom side of the gaff then, and I measure over one foot five, which is 17 inches, and then measure three feet. So now I'm going to make a couple of little wooden stops on there and I'm going to make those out of ash. I cut two one half by three quarter inch pieces of ash and then taped them together and drilled a five eighths inch hole between the two of them.
I'm going to get a little varnish on here. Um, I'm using Total Boat Lust and I've mixed it 50-50 with thinner, which is what you should do with on fresh wood. This is really some pretty wood. I'm quite surprised at how much figuring there actually is in it that didn't expect that from the spruce. So I'm gonna get several coats on both of the spars and in between I'm gonna sand lightly so that I build up a really nice finish on both of them. So I'll have that all finished by the next episode. Speaking of the next episode, I'll be making the gaff jaws and also the jib club tack socket. Uh, until then, thanks for watching, and remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.